Well, good afternoon, and God bless you. Um, happy Monday. Uh, today, if I'm correct, is the first day of spring. So happy spring as well. God bless you. I, I pray that your week was good. I pray that um, your weekend was amazing. And I pray your day of worship was over and above what you expected. I pray the Lord paid you and your fellow um, Christians a visitation. Amen. As always, if, if you like this broadcast, this live, um, please share it um, with those um, family members and friends and co-workers um, and send a, a like and that encourages me. Remember, as I always say, we're in this together. Amen. Amen. And it does encourage me. I am excited um, always about the word of God. Um, and I, I love when he gives me um, themes that I can explore and bring to you. And then if there's something that you would like for me um, to explore, um, just put it in the comments and um, I'll make it happen. Amen. The Lord and I will make it happen. Let us pray. Father, thank you so much um, for your glory and your peace and your joy. Thank you for the new mercy that you gave us this morning. Thank you for being so kind. Thank you for being our Savior. Thank you for the blood wash. Thank you for filling us with the Holy Ghost. Thank you for just the blessings that we are able to obtain because of your promises. So let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable unto you. O Lord, you're my strength and you're my redeemer. Amen. Amen. Well, I didn't want to let March, um, um, march out before um, I s did a tribute to women. Um, um, I know we have one more um, Monday, but it, I was led to do it today because we, as women, um, we, we are just marvelous in his eyesight. Amen. So we're going to talk about phenomenal women, women of distinction, um, vessels of life, vessels of light and vessels of love. And the scripture that um, undergirds that is found in Luke 1 and 28. And it is the latter part of the scripture um, that really um, sends this message. But I'm going to read um, the whole entire uh, scripture because it really was talking to Mary, the mother of Jesus. And the angel said, Hail, thou art highly favored. Amen. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And we are blessed. We are highly favored. Amen. Amen. I did not want to leave this month to end without paying homage to women. My belief that we are the softer side of Christ. I just believe that. We are the vessels that give and nurture life. Just as Christ's light shines through the baptized believer, our light of love illuminates through the growth, mature, maturity, and success of our children. As a tribute to my children, written in the foreword of my first publication, which is entitled my first book, My Time. That is an acronym that says me and you together infused in a moment of endearment. I pen the following. One of the most rewarding joys of my life was parenting my three children, Ron, Michelle, and Michael. My life is enriched with gratification and overwhelming delight. 
as I watch their growth and maturity to adulthood, each day reminds me how blessed I am and grateful for the privilege of being their mother. I believe motherhood embodies the essence and characteristics of Jesus Christ, some of which is love, compassion, forgiveness, patience, a nurturer, and a protector. With full confidence, I entrust my legacy and our family's continued story to be remembered and respected through their life journey. That has been one of the greatest joys of my life to watch them go from a newborn baby to now full grown, um, living a good life. God has blessed my children. Amen. So I want to remember, I know if I feel this way about my children, I, I, I would hope that most mothers and fathers feel that way about theirs. And I want to remember some of the legacies of these w phenomenal women that have made great sacrifices. Amen. We should never forget the phenomenal woman who made extraordinary extraordinary contributions through their education, their time, their sacrifices, their God-given abilities, their prayers, their struggles, their tears, and their triumphs. I cannot list all the women, women who have done great exploits. I will just name a few starting with history makers not excluding the countless mothers, grandmothers, aunties, school teachers, along with the kind lady that lived next door in our neighborhoods, whose names have not been recorded on paper. Yet their kind deeds, the smiles that they gave, the hugs, their inspiration guided us on our life journeys they are forever written in our mind and in our heart. Amen. Amen. These are women from every culture, dispensation, walk of life, past and present, who have indubitably marked on a landscape of history with their many achievements. And I'm just going to list a few, amen. We want to remember, we can, I can't list them all, but you can make your own list as well as what I have done. There is Maya Angelou, who did, wrote great books, who penned great um, works of art through her literature, through her poems. There's Michelle Obama. Ruby Bridges. Now, Ruby was the first black child to attend a white Southern elementary school. She's the one that they show where the um, guards are escorting her to school. Then there was Angela Davis. I remember her when I was a teenager. Shirley Chisholm. She was the first Afro-American woman elected to the U.S. Congress and the first black person to run for the Democratic Party's presidential nomination. And I can only imagine what these women have endured to get to the status that they have. There was Amelia Earhart, a man, do you remember her with the plane? Oprah Winfrey, who is a legend in her own right. Camelia Harris, who is our first black and first Asian American U.S. Vice President, amen. So let's continue to keep her lifted in prayer. I am sure she makes it look easy, but I'm sure behind the scenes she has shed it a many tear. Then it was Mother Teresa, amen. Coretta Scott King, an amazing woman who showed 
the nation that how she mourned her husband with grace and dignity and continued the struggle that her husband formulated and raised her children. Amen. And she was a very educated woman. Then there are the hidden figures. Katherine Johnson, Mary Jackson, and Dorothy Vaughn. They were the African-American mathematicians who played an integral part in NASA's space race success. They did a movie which is, was astounding to showcase their life and what they, their contribution, because they tried to take it out of history, out of the history books, which some of them they did, amen. But it was brought to life to let our little girls know that you can be whatever you want to be, amen. Whether it's a vice president, whether it's a poet, whether it's working with NASA, whether it would be someone like Oprah Winfrey, um, whether you want to be an actress, whether you want to be a great woman of God who goes around the country and spreads the gospel and brings souls to Christ. If you can dream it, you can be it. And it has been left on record with these amazing, phenomenal women that made it against all odds. Now, they're the women of the Bible. Amen. Let's not forget them. The women in the Bible were wives like us. They were mothers. They were daughters. They were servants. They were slaves. And some were prostitutes. Hey, hey, hey. Um, I won't tell you what my pastor called them on Wednesday at Bible study. Amen. But it's the slang word for prostitutes. As both victors and victims. Some of these women in the Bible changed the course of important events, while others retain powerless to affect their own destinies. Amen. Because women back in that day, they didn't have the rights that we even have. Amen. Most women in the Bible are anonymous and unnamed, unsung Herons who contributed to the spreading of God's word. There were some women, like the Shudamite woman, they never really gave or or pinned her name. But look at the at the history of her story, the hope that it gives us. These women back there were courageous. They really paved the way for us to come along, amen, because they lived in a male-dominated culture, period, amen. These influential women um, of the Bible impacted not only the nation of Israel, but also eternal history. Even now, we study them. We have women study about them because of the great exploits that they did under extreme, mean circumstances. Some were saints and some were scoundrels. Amen, amen. A few were queens, but most were commoners. All played a key role in the spectacular history of the Bible. Amen? A key role. So we're not just in the world in the way. There is purpose for us. And when Christ came, ah, he changed some things. It had always been, you look at the women in the, in the Old Testament, we're going to get to some of them. But God, the Christ changed some of the scenarios when he came. And he let them know just how important the women are and were. Each woman brought her unique character to bear on her situation. And for this, we still remember them centuries later, these women of the Bible. This is just to name a few. There is Eve first woman. 
And even though she kind of messed up, um, uh, God um, spanked her, and by spanking her, it, that, that fell on all of us. But it was the woman, he said, that was going to bring forth the seed of the woman that was going to bring forth his son. So even though we mess up and do wrong, if we repent, God can still use us. It doesn't matter what profession you might have been in, that old profession that we know of that will make you dollars. If you repent, God will use you for his kingdom. Remember the woman at the well, amen? Because after she had an encounter with Christ, the Bible says she ran to the city and told them, I met a different kind of man, amen? Then there is Sarah, who was the mother of the Jewish nation. And remember Sarah, who um, gave her, um, like her counterpart, her maid, uh, to her husband, amen, start all that controversy. But anyway, God still used her because the promise was on her. Then there's Rebecca, Isaiah's wife, Rachel, the wife of Jacob and the mother of Joseph, Leah, the wife of Jacob through deceit. And it was the father that deceived um, Jacob. After all, he was deceived. He was the deceiver. So we, we reap what we sow. Amen. Then there was Miriam, the sister of Moses, Rahab, who is in the lineage of Christ. And she, um, she ran a brawl house. Amen. A brothel house. I think how you enunciate it. There was Deborah, the judge, who went and conquered. Amen. There was Delilah who fooled um, um, Sol no, um, oh, um, si no, not uh, Solomon, but um, Samson. She, she fooled Samson into being captured, but in the end, God still won. Amen. There's Ruth and Naomi. What a, what a great duo. And look at um, the lineage that Ruth created by marrying Boaz. And look at the help Naomi gave her. So the Bible says the young and the old are to go forth together. The older women have the wisdom and, and the knowledge. The younger women, they're, you know, they're viva vivacious and, and they're ready. But together, we can accomplish a lot of things. What a great pattern. Then there was Hannah, who was barren, and what amazed me about her, her first child, Samuel, she said, if you give me a child, I will give him back to you. She was an awesome woman. I don't know if I could have had a child, went through all that labor, went through all that crying, and then just give the child, amen? But she did, and then God blessed her with more children. There was Bathsheba. Mm -hmm. We know about Bathsheba. She turned the head of, of the king. Um, there was Jezebel, and there was Jezebels back then. There's Jezebels now. There's Jezebels in our history, amen? So don't be fooled. There was Jezebel. There's still Jezebels. There was Esther, who was a Persian queen, who saved her people from being extinct, from being annihilated. There was Mother uh, Mary, the mother of Jesus, and and I give I I give her so much credit to know that this child that she carried was not like when she came together with her husband to to produce and make a baby, but this was a godson, and to watch him grow and watch him do ministry and watch him heal and do all the things that he did. And have to stand there and watch them crucify him on the cross. I could cry even right now. God blessed her. That's why she's highly favored. Then there was Elizabeth. She was the auntie of Jesus. We all have aunties, amen. And she produced the forerunner of Christ. 
There's Mary and Martha, them two sisters. So whatever combination um, that it, it is for women, you can find it in the Bible. You can find it in our legacy of women, whether it's sisters, whether it's mother and daughter, whether it's our aunties, our grandmothers, amen. Then there's Mary of Bethany who anointed Jesus for his burial and she gave him the best that she had to anoint him, amen. And he said, no matter where the gospel is preached or recorded, she will be in it. Amen. Woo! Bad mama. Then there was Mary Magdalene, who was an unwavering disciple. Christ cleaned her up, and she was the first one at the tomb. And they said, go back. The angel said, go back and tell the disciples and Peter that he is not here, that he has risen. So she was a woman with a message. Amen. So God cleaned her up and she was steadfast. She didn't care what they did in terms of trying to make Christ look terrible. She believed in who he was. And that's how we have to be. We've got to be all in believing that Christ is the Christ. He's the one that came died, resurrected, and now he sits on the right hand of the Father. Then there's someone that no one really talks about, and that was Phoebe. She's in the New Testament, and she was a deacon in the church in Censoraria. I think I'm enunciating right. She was a minister of the New Testament women, and she is the one that uh, Paul gave the letter to take to the church. And they had so much respect for her. She was able to get up and read the letter from Paul because he was at that time in prison. Amen. God is amazing. He is so amazing. We, we as women have such great, rich history, not only in, in, in the world that we live in, but in, in, in the biblical world that God created and sent his son. Amen. We are somebody. We are special. We are fearfully and wonderfully made. In closing, amen. In Psalms 139, that's what David penned. And I, we can adopt, adopt that saying, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Why? Because God did not leave any stones unturned. He gave us intellect. He gave us the ability to take almost nothing and create something. This passage clearly speaks of the care, attention, and details by which God has made us. We are molded, sculptured, and chiseled into magnificent works of beauty, intelligence, purpose, and plan. We are resolute, finding answers to complex situations. We are resourceful, using the ability of materials. We are resourceful in stretching dollars. We can take $1 and do a whole lot with it. Amen. We are recycling uh, components. We are resourceful in uh, recycling components to objects of recategorization. Amen. So we can take an old dress and cut it and make a skirt and a shirt. Amen. We can reconfigure that thing where it was an old black dress. Now it's a skirt and a blouse. And we can add some buttons and some zippers and some little to do things on it and have a brand new outfit. Amen. We give new meaning to reimagination, cutting off jeans that were too short, 
making them pedal pushers. I, I get, um, I get tickled when I see fashions and they have those pants that only come like, um, just below your, your calf leg. Those were called pedal pushers in our day. Amen. And some of us or our mothers couldn't afford them. So when we grew taller and, and the pants looked like we were at a flood, they would cut them. Some would put rickrack around the bottom. Some would hem them and they have all these strings hanging now. Some would do that to make the strings hang. We reimagine um, fashion before it even came in 2023. Amen. Don't fool yourself. Amen. Um, putting leftovers in the pot. I can remember this. They would add a little bit of this and a little bit of that, all the leftovers that were potable. And um, they would um, add a little bit of this and a little bit of that and rename that dish as a potluck stew. Amen. So they say, what's for dinner? Potluck stew. Now, when we got older, you know, we understood what that was. That wasn't nothing but some leftovers. But when you were young, boy, that was good. Get you some crackers or some bread or some biscuits or some rolls. You had a good dinner because most time there was gravy in that potluck. Amen. So now they sell stew. Well, we was doing stew a whole long time ago. Praise the Lord. <laughs> yes, we can multitask with equity and efficiency. Amen. We are prayer warriors. We will deny ourselves for our families. We will be there until the last mile of the way. We'll go without so that they can have, so that they can be better, so that they can stand on our shoulders and keep the baton moving forward. On page 25 of my book, I give honor to my mother. I would be remiss um, to give a presentation about women and not talk about my mother who gave me life. Amen. She was a fragrant garment of honor. I think of her daily and miss our phone calls and the stories that she would share with me. Often her stories were repeated over and over. Amen. But I still enjoyed them just as much as the first time that I heard them. My mother was a great storyteller. Amen. I think she missed her calling in life. She'd have been a great Philadelphia lawyer too. She not only spoke with dramatization, but she also had body gyrations to emphasize her points. Inside of her vault, which is her heart, were chronicles of events that shaped her personality. All that she was is what she went through and became. She was the sum total of distinction. Amen. She only stood about 5'4". Yes, my mother was the optimum of the Proverbs 31 woman. And I do, I am grateful for how she raised us. We were raised in the church. We lived in a home. We had a backyard we could play, with, play in. And like I said, when she couldn't afford certain things, she took what she had and reimagined and reinvented. Amen. And these things have been passed on to me. My mother molded and shaped me into the woman that I am. Just my foundation as a woman comes from her. I have empowered my only daughter, we know her as Michelle or nicknamed Mike, that girl, to continue the legacy of a strong woman. So in conclusion, I'm going to read a strong woman 
versus a woman of strength. And I do want to say, um, give a shout out to my daughter who has just completed her master's degree um, in social work and also her licensure. She got that in one day. The first time she tried, she passed. Um, God is so good and I am so grateful to have been a mother, to be a wife, to be an auntie, a grandmother, a great-grandmother, and the bride of Christ. Amen. So I'm going to leave you with this poem. And it says, A strong woman versus a woman of strength. A strong woman works out every day to keep her body in shape. But a woman of strength kneels in prayer to keep her soul in shape. A strong woman isn't afraid of anything, but a woman of strength shows courage in the midst of her fear. A strong woman won't let anyone get the best of her, but a woman of strength gives the best of her to everyone. A strong woman walks sure-footedly, but a woman of strength knows God will catch her when she falls. A strong woman wears the look of confidence on her face. But a woman of strength wears grace. A strong woman has faith that she is strong enough for the journey. But a woman of strength has faith that it is in the journey that she will become strong. So be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Amen. I thank God that I am a woman. I thank God for women. And for the men that have joined us today, I pray that this has blessed you um, because we are delicate creatures, not all of us, but the ones that are, we are, and we are to be celebrated, to give each other our flowers while we live. So until next week, um, be blessed, stay strong, not only be a strong woman, but be a woman of strength. Until next week, I love you with the love of Christ. God bless you. Pray for me as I pray for you. And I thank God for the, my husband who celebrates me as both a strong woman and a woman of strength. Amen.